Hello, my name is Jonathan Morton. I'm a teacher of physics at Erlson High School in the Scottish Borders, and today I'll be talking about embedding retrieval practice across the curriculum. Thanks for joining today. Firstly, what do we mean by retrieval practice? Well, when students retrieve and bring information to mind, this mental challenge produces durable long-term learning. So retrieval practice is all about the idea of taking what's already in your mind and acting on that by retrieving it and in doing so strengthening the connections to that piece of information. So that's as opposed to cramming more information in on top of it. Although this technique hasn't always been referred to as retrieval practice, the effect of bringing information to mind as a powerful learning strategy has been known for about over 100 years. There's a wealth of high quality scientific research demonstrating the benefits of retrieval practice to learning. However, I'd encourage you to look at the most recent science research to find out more. There's been a drive over the past few years to ensure that research in cognitive science extends beyond the lab and into educational settings. And so the website retrievalpractice.org has got a link to current cognitive science researchers working in this field. And actually it has a huge wealth of information on the topic of retrieval practice. Within the classroom, there's a range of ways in which we can embed retrieval practice into our teaching, some of which I'm sure you're very familiar with. I'll look at each briefly in turn and suggest ways in which their effect in the classroom can be maximized. Questioning is a cornerstone of teaching and its flexibility means that it can be used at any point during the lesson, as a start a question during class time or at a plenary. It can also be easily tailored to suit an individual pupil during the class. For questioning to be an effective retrieval practice tool, it's essential that the questions are low stakes. The act of retrieving knowledge is enhancing their learning, so pupils must not feel that they are being tested or judged and therefore become unwilling to attempt an answer. Quizzes offer a very similar route to retrieval practice as questioning. Again, they must be low stakes to have the desired effect as a learning strategy, and they can be used at any point during the lesson. Multiple choice quiz with well-constructed alternative answers can result in an effective retrieval tool. However, a quiz that involves thinking of an answer with no options in front of the pupil um, is going to be even more effective. The brain dump offers an alternative route to retrieval practice with little to no preparation. All that's required is a blank sheet of paper and pupils are asked to write down or draw what they know about a specified topic. To provide a small amount of structure, several keywords could be added or suggested at the start, from which pupils could add their own knowledge onto. Questioning, quizzes and brain dumps offer flexible opportunities for revision on a lesson-to-lesson -lesson basis. This can allow for quick and low preparation retrieval of topics recently covered, for example, during the previous week. So the table that's shown here gives a topic A being uh, introduced in week number one and questioning quizzes and brain dumps can be used during week number one to retrieve information from earlier in the week. To maximize the effects of retrieval practice, it's important not just to retrieve knowledge from a few days ago, and through careful design of spaced retrieval practice into a curriculum, we can aim to carry out retrieval practice from the last lesson, week, day, or month. And the learning scientists referred to on the slides here uh, provide a fantastic resource for effective learning strategies where spaced practice and retrieval practice make up two of their six most effective um, learning strategies that they have been researching. So the act of forgetting before retrieving will make the process seem a little more challenging for the pupils and it can be tricky to convince them that it's actually helping them more when they are only experiencing additional challenge at the time. However, if you do stick with it, when they begin to see the success in their attainment and their achievement in the subject, um, that is usually enough for them to be won over in terms of the overall system. And explaining why you're doing what you're doing in terms of the choices you're making 
um, can be very powerful in terms of the students gaining trust in the structure that you've provided them with. Designing in a lag to when a topic was studied in class to when the homework is set is a straightforward way of adding spacing to your retrieval practice. So an example here in our table, so week number one, our new piece of theory um, on topic A, and rather than having the homework straight after topic A has been, has been studied in class, we could provide a lag and delay for a number of weeks before the homework on topic A is set. So the pupils will find it more challenging, but they will be undergoing additional retrieval practice through working on their homework with that spaced lag present. Small topic or unit tests offer another opportunity to space the retrieval practice, particularly with regard to the revision of what will end in the end be a high stakes test. So again, emphasizing to the pupils where the retrieval practice can come in using the words like retrieval practice and space learning in terms of explaining to the students how to effectively go about their own revision. I find it quite useful to use examples of how I structure the course in terms of the spacing of the homework in order to show them how to make their revision effective. And so their revision plan will end up looking like a very small scaled down version of your curriculum structure where spaced retrieval practice is built in. So looking at an example of where a test might be, then we may set a, a test several weeks after the homework, resulting in a small amount of forgetting between the homework and the test before the revision kicks in. It can be very common within educational settings to include little spacing into retrieval practice. For example, working on a topic for several weeks, homework maybe halfway through or towards the end of the topic, and then a test right at the end. And you, there will be a short term win as the working memory may be filled up with relevant topics um, that have recently been studied. However, it's very limited in terms of the long term benefits to learning. Very often learning will be required again at a future date, for example, for an exam or for a higher level course to be studied in the future, or even for the world of work beyond education. So let's take a slightly closer look at how our brain retains information with time. German psychologist Ebbinghaus tested his memory in the late 1880s, and he used meaningless three letter words and he, he graphed the results of the retention of these words over time. So a typical forgetting curve based on Ebbinghaus's results looks a bit like this. Our retention rapidly falls away at the start and then begins to level out um, as time increases. As a classroom teacher, we have a good idea about what we would like our pupils to learn about with regard to the maximum possible knowledge on a topic. And we may not reach that point when the material is first covered in class, and certainly there'll be a spread of knowledge um, in terms of the individual pupils within that class and where they are with regard to the maximum. However, what's in common for all of them is that their attention will fall away with time. So when we first learn something, there'll be a typically a very large amount of time between them first learning about it and when they might need to use it again in the distant future, so for, for example, an exam at the end of a year. And even worse, it's common for pupils to have an inflated idea of their understanding of a topic as time proceeds. They remember doing well in the topic during class, but don't realize that they've forgotten a lot of the information in the intervening time. But by carefully adding in space retrieval practice, such as homework, we can alter the forgetting curve by interrupting the forgetting. And likewise, with a test, we introduce a space to when we start studying for our test and our revision acts as an additional point of retrieval practice 
And again, we're interrupting the forgetting. So we may end up with a profile looking a little bit like this with a carefully structured curriculum. And if we compare to what it may have looked like if we had our homework and our tests combined together or very close together at the end of learning about a topic, well, we minimize the opportunity to get as far as we can up to the maximum. And then we have the typical forgetting curve dropping away with time. And so there may end up being a very large amount of time between when a topic was last studied at its test and when the final exam takes place. So I'll go through an example of how the course has been structured in our physics department to provide regular spaced retrieval practice and how these opportunities progress from S3 through to advanced higher. So in S3, there are opportunities each week for flexible retrieval practice through the use of quizzes, brain dumps and questioning. And there will always be quite a large space between the, when the topic was first introduced and when homework is then set on that topic. And in S3, that homework might consist of homework questions on a number of topics. Again, a fairly large space between the homework and a test so that there is a small amount of forgetting taking place. And then we're spacing our retrieval practice to the revision and our final assessment on those topics. So for each of the topics, for example, for topic A, we've got retrieval practice during the week. We've got retrieval practice several weeks later for the homework, and we've got retrieval practice several weeks, possibly months later for the test. And in National 5, it follows a very similar theme. However, a key difference is that the number of homeworks has increased significantly due to the amount of time that we see each of the classes each week. And however, for each of the individual topics, we may have a similar number of times that we're undergoing retrieval practice for each of those topics. Moving on to higher, key difference here is that within the homeworks, the homeworks aren't, they're no longer on only an individual topic. Future homeworks include some questions on previous topics. So in our example here, when we're doing our homework on topic B, there are a few questions that are related to topic A. And so if we focus in on topic A, we can see we've got an additional point of retrieval practice built in during subsequent homeworks. And for the advanced hire, we have flipped things around. So we have the typical retrieval practice taking place within each week per topic. And then this time the test occurs first. So we've got the retrieval practice in preparation, revision for the test. And then when it comes to the homework, the homeworks are no longer by topic. The homeworks are now on a little bit of everything that has been tested on so far. So the idea here is that your revision for your small Fairly low, low stakes test pulls up your knowledge as close to the maximum as possible. And then your homeworks acting as retrieval practice each week on every topic, if possible, are then allowing for that high level that was obtained after the test to be maintained for a long amount of time. So as many additional retrieval practice opportunities as possible. And we think by making the structure clear and through each transition between the year groups explaining to the pupils why these course structures are in place and the benefits to them, that by the time they're at a position to leave school and move on to the next stage of their educational journey, they will now be in a position to, to carry out um, spaced retrieval practice on their own, knowing how to structure their own learning when a lot of this structure ends up being taken away from them. For example, going on to university and planning their own revision continuously throughout the year. The final retrieval practice method that we make use of in the physics department at Arlson High School is note taking. 
which is not one that people typically would put under the category of retrieval practice, but I'll try and explain how we make use of that. So in third year, in S3, when we first see pupils specifically for physics, we provide them with notes that are in the format of Cornell note-taking um, note method. And this consists of information that's given to you, the main notes, or the key thoughts on a topic, and on the left, we have a margin down the left for additional pupil notes. And then at the bottom, we have a summary. And so there, the pupils are looking to summarize all of the information above the main notes on the topic, their own additional notes summarized into some key points at the bottom. And this offers a way for personal retrieval practice to take place. There are opportunities built into the teaching for them to go back and update their notes. They may be working on a topic and then a few weeks later have homework on this topic, get feedback on that, and they are asked to go back to their notes and update them based on the results of their homework or a test. And so they're going back and they're needing to retrieve knowledge on why they took their additional notes and what they were thinking at the time and to add and to annotate and to include labeled diagrams as part of their retrieval practice. It's also a strategy that we see the pupils making use of as they move up through the years. By explaining the benefits to them, they can see how it helps them with their own structures, their own thoughts, their own retrieval practice. And we only provide them with these teacher provided Cornell notes in S3. Many of them we see in advanced hire have made use of them throughout their time at school and not just in physics. So here's an example from our S3 Waves booklet that makes use of the Cornell note taking method. So the teacher provided notes are printed and given to them and they take their own additional notes on the left hand side. They might be labeled diagrams or they might be annotating or highlighting the information given to them in the teacher provided notes. And at the bottom of the page, they have the opportunity to summarize everything above, summarizing their notes, the teacher's notes, and any annotations that they have made. So that brings an end to our look at how you can embed retrieval practice within a curriculum. And we've also looked at the use of space learning to enhance our retrieval practice. There's a few relevant reading um, or places of inspiration that we've made use of over the last few years with regard to embedding note-taking, retrieval practice and space learning into our course um, at Arlston High School. So thank you very much for your time and if you'd like to come and visit Arlston High School to discuss this uh, further with us in the physics department we'd be very well happy to welcome you there at any time. Thank you.